Hello, my name is Piotr Krawczyk. I am working in Data Corporation and for last six years I work with Android. Uh, from each of three is related to automotive variant of it. I would like to show you today uh, some work that we have done uh, within the Android Automotive Special Interest Group related to the audio abstraction layer. Within this group we are investigating various scenarios and various strategies how to handle audio topics on Android platform. Uh, as we know Android uh, comes from a quite different hardware setup uh, so it was designed to work with only one hardware and it was one operating system on this hardware and this creates a bit uh, different ecosystem than uh, the one that is currently emitting nowadays cars and of course future cars. So we started this proof of concept activities in order to examine in real life situations audio problems that are related to the HAL implementation and to the integration with automotive solutions that are already existing on the market to find out the possible gaps and how we can handle them. It's a not so easy task because the documentation is not so available. It's quite scattered across various sources and sometimes it's not fully explaining the mechanics that is behind the configuration. So you need to just read the code and the code is uh, quite complex. Mm, you have plenty of layers, plenty of uh, components that, uh, that are acting in the system. So mm, we would like to, to understand it and we would like to improve it and find out uh, as many generic uh, components as we can in order to make it easier to bring up, to deploy new features so when we were thinking about the possible architecture of this, uh, of this proof concept, uh, we were also uh, basing on what uh, Google is uh, actually suggesting, how that, so that the, some of the parts of the system should be handled uh, outside of the Android, like chimes, warnings, all those uh, critical sounds that should be handled uh, separately from from the Android and uh, should be mixed outside. So uh, in order to get this, first we would like to actually uh, get to just the raw PCM stream from the Android without any eff effects, without any modifications, without any additional features. We would like to ha just have pure PCM stream in order to properly handle it outside of the Android system and uh, to get the possibility to, to control the routing on the whole um, platform. On this slide you can see a more detailed architecture. So let me explain it a bit to you. Mm, so we start with a kind of a border layer that is audio flinger. Mm, this is a layer that we don't want to, to touch. This is already integrated within the Android framework and uh, we would like to be travel uh, compliant so we are not changing the Android framework if we find it uh, useful or we would find a need so we, will, we can extend it at our additional services but uh, we would like to enable already existing applications on the market available so we won't touch the framework. Uh, all the changes that we would like to done should be fixed to the vendor partition and should be related to the how or the custom services. So in order to get that uh, we uh, would like to change the audio how to not directly communicate with the hardware but uh, to communicate with some external entity like uh, external mixer or, or external processing relay uh, to get PCM, PCM stream in our current solution. Uh, we are uh, gathering uh, audio data within audio hull as it is designed, then pass it to additional component called audio relay in our case 
that is actually exposing the data on uh, TCP IP sockets to the external servers that can easily read and manage the audio. Here is a data flow that describes how uh, how the, uh, the actually uh, PCMs streams are sending to each other. So we have Android audio framework that is not changed. That is communicating with the audio hall via Heidel interface. This is something that is already defined. The audio hall is something that we are providing within uh, this um, JNV group. And uh, from the audio hall, uh, via just the Unix socket, the named socket, we are sending the draw PCM streams to the custom component audio relay. And that's responsibility is to read from the Unix socket that is local to, to, to the installation to uh, externally available TCP sockets that can be actually uh, handled by an external entity that we would like. Here you can see the components that uh, we've created or changed. Uh, we've added a separate configuration for the uh, device that is uh, JNV compliant for the emulator. We've added the uh, definition for the custom audio hall and audio relax components. Uh, the custom audio hall uh, is derived from the uh, Google uh, audio hall for emulator. We just change it to use local name sockets instead of uh, accessing uh, audio hardware via ALSA or actually tiny ALSA library. Uh, we've also are sending uh, data not mixed together but split it uh, to the context uh, and zones that are defined in the audio policy and the current zones. And uh, the, the audio relay component um, that is designed for um, forwarding the data from local sockets that are available only on the platform to the to the externally available TCP sockets that can be read on the old network to devices. Here we have the um, demo environment that uh, I will be using uh, for the demonstration purposes. It's deployed uh, on uh, the PC, on the laptop PC, that has a Windows host and uh, the Windows host is running Android emulator uh, with all the JNV components uh, in parallel. There is a Linux virtual machine, actually Ubuntu uh, virtual machine, that uh, has some, some TCP um, servers um, configured uh, and uh, those TCP servers are reading from the TCP sockets and passing the data to the ALSA device in order to play it and uh, have some visual also feedbacks on, on the volume meters that it is actually being played and uh, in what kind. Here is actual configuration that we are using uh, on, on Android. Uh, we've got two zones defined um, for the primary and rare seat. seat. The uh, primary zone has uh, the context split to, to the ones that you can see. There is a separate for media, navigation, voice, and so and so. And the rare seat has just a one context that combines all the media navigation system sounds and all to the one bus address and those bus address corresponds to the TCP ports that have their servers on the virtual machines configured for listening. Here's the scenario that I would like you to, uh, to, uh, to see. So we will use a kitchen sink for, for playback because it allows to um, easily play audio data for on various contexts and also enable us to, to change the zone uh, from one to another. And for the uh, for the Linux part we will use a play to play uh, and show the volumeters uh, together with Netcat utility to act as a TCP server. So here is the virtual machine desktop. We've got the servers um, some of them are already working. Uh, here you have the, some explanation how it is actually organized. So we've got this Netcat uh, utility that is listening on 5000 port and passing data to the Aplay. Okay. 
So let's start the Android. The Android is the started on uh, the host PC. It's not started on the um, virtual machine environment. So as I mentioned before, we will use Kitchen Sync for playback. It has this nice audio module that allows various operations on the audio. We've got zone 0 selected and let's start some playback. And you can see that on the port 5000 that this uh, media playback we've got data coming. Right. And separately the navigation data has come. Some other cells has One, come two, three, four, five, six. and still the playback is, is there. Let's change the sound. And now the playback is also done on the first uh, sound. Right. So we can also stop the server, start it again, and the data is still coming as long as the Android is in the sending it. So that was the actual demo. Some short range improvements that we would like to, to introduce is to improve the configuration area as currently we have uh, socket configuration and bus addresses uh, hard coded in, inside the proof of concept and uh, I believe that uh, it could be nice to have it uh, configurable or, or actual configuration should be derived from the audio policy and uh, zone and car zone poli uh, policy configurations. Uh, we don't have uh, many recovery scenarios so we should also I think about uh, some um, some of this in the future, and uh, the, the quite important topic is a volume control. Currently, um, we don't have any volume handling in our proof of concept, and I believe that this is something that we would like to have to uh, f enable Android user to control the volume of um, all external amplifiers or, or external clients also. So the demo showed that uh, we can easily get the PCM data from Android, uh, the music context are not mixed, we've got the zones also separated and this can be uh, sent to, uh, to the external entities of a TCP medium uh, that, that the this proof of concept demo shows. But actually uh, with uh, this kind of architecture it can be sent whenever you would like to. It, there, is, it, there is not much restrictions there. What uh, is uh, next interesting topics that, that I think are interesting is uh, volume control and uh, CPU offloading. It's uh, making a bit uh, more complex the whole idea but it's, it's uh, something that definitely needs to be addressed. Topics that we are currently discussing within the group beside the proof of concept uh, um, are now mostly focusing on handling external streams uh, like mentioned here, pluggable devices, uh, other ECUs, microphone arrays, how to properly route it uh, in this complex area uh, how much control Android should have over those resources or maybe uh, there should be uh, several levels of, of control of those and also um, possibilities to handle it out completely outside of Android like it should be done for critical sources I guess but for the microphone RIs the ECNR topics is something that needs to be um, somehow addressed and we are trying to find the proper solutions and the possible scenarios for that. The possible evolvements uh, of uh, our proof of concept uh, are like to 
introduce some latency measurement that is important for the lip sync purpose and for better user experiences. Would like also to explore other transport mediums uh, besides uh, already used sockets like also loop devices that can be used, uh, for example, in containerized environment, uh, quite successfully some shared memory or um, maybe for interpartition communication in hypervised environment. And the the whole multi OS environment concept is is something that uh, we would definitely like to address, and we would definitely like to propose some architecture for that, how to cooperate with the host system in a better way, and how to utilize the benefits coming from having uh, accompanying OS, maybe some real time OS. Uh, other possibilities that uh, we would like to explore is to integrate uh, a genuine audio manager, which seems to be quite a nice option. And what is also needs to be addressed is this low latency framework like A-Audio that is widely used in gaming. This, uh, this needs some lower latency and currently it expects uh, some more direct access to the hardware. And uh, we need to find out how to or properly organize it in uh, for example, multi OS environment when the hardware is uh, hidden uh, somehow and uh, need to be shared amongst uh, various OSs. And as mentioned before, the CPU offloading is something that is most of the interest for us. And uh, last but not least, the Bluetooth devices integration, like a Bluetooth head, so headphones, uh, headsets, and also Bluetooth as an audio source. So that would be all from my side. Thank you for watching these presentations. Thank you for spending your time and let me invite you to the following workshop session when you can ask questions and challenge solutions that we proposed and maybe help us. Thank you for listening and watching and I hope see you in some minutes.